Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. This is SM Rashidul Islam, General Secretary Economic Reporters Firm. Sure. Welcome to all today's virtual discussion on yes. Bangladesh China economic and trade yes. relations in the aftermath of the COVID 19 global pandemic. Currently organized by Bangladesh China Chamber of Commerce yes. and Industry, BCCI, and Economic Reporters Firm. It is our pleasure that we got. Honorable Commerce Minister, Mr. Tipu Munshi, as the chief guest, oil, Honorable Ambassador of the Republic of the People's Republic of China, His Excellency, Mr. Li Ji Ming, as the special guest in the virtual discussion. Besides here, we have also Mohammad Shahjul Islam, the Executive Chairman of the Bangladesh Investment Development Authority, BIDA. Mr. Mahabubu Jaman, Bangladesh Ambassador to the People's Republic of China and Mohammad Joshimuddin, the President of the Federation of Bangladesh Timbers of Commerce and Industries, FBCCI, as a special guest in this virtual discussion. We have also amongst us here President Ms. Sharmin Rinbi, Joint Secretary General, BCCI, Mr. Al Mamun Mida, and Senior Vice President, BCCI, Brigadier General Shah Mohammad Sultan. Uddin Iqbal. Today's discussion will be chaired by Mr. Gaji Gulam Murtuja, President BCCCI. Also present here today's keynote speaker, Evian Trade Economist Dr. Muhammad Abdul Rajak. Dr. Rajak is the research director, uh, research director at Policy Research Institute of Bangladesh. It's leading research institute in Bangladesh. He is an expert on international trade with vast experience of undertaking research and analysis on emerging crisis, emerging issues in the global economy and the resultant, resultant trade relations between countries. In fact, this is, first, this is for the first time the Economic Reporters Forum has organized such a time befitting discussion jointly with the BCCCI on Bangladesh China economy and trade relations in the aftermath of the COVID-19 global pandemic. In the aftermath of the pandemic, effectively dealing with COVID-19, revitalizing the export-led growth processes and renewed dynamism in investment activities are of critical importance to Bangladesh. Proactive and productive investment with China can greatly help in achieving these objectives. I hope this webinar will explore the possible options for extending trade and economic cooperation with China to promote Bangladesh's economic development. It could have been better if we, if we could have made the proceedings of the today's whole discussion in English, as we have the Honorable Ambassador of China here. But our great intention is to disseminate the outcome of this discussion among the readers and audiences easily. So we prefer to continue our whole deliberation in Bangla for better understanding. We request our honorable chief guest and special guests to deliver their discussion in Bangla. Now, now I would like to opportunity to, to request Mr. Al Mamun Mida, Joint Secretary General, Bangladesh China Chamber of Commerce and Industry, BCCCI, to kindly deliver his welcome remarks. Mr. Mida, sir, now floor is yours. Thank you, Rashid Bhai. <clears throat> Actually, I'm delivering this speech on behalf of our General Secretary since he is not uh, feeling well. So I'm, uh, I will be attending uh, the guest today. However, let's start. Honorable Chief Guest, His Excellency, Mr. Tipu Munshi, MP, Honorable Minister, Ministry of Commerce, Government of Bangladesh. Guest of Honor, Mr. Uh, Shirajul Islam, Executive Chairman, Bangladesh Investment Development Board Authority, BIDA. His Excellency, Mr. Lee Jiming, Chinese Ambassador to People's Republic of Bangladesh. His Excellency, Mr. Mahbub Zaman, Bangladesh Ambassador to People's Republic of China. Mr. Joshi Muddin, President of BCCI. The keynote paper presenter, dignitaries, Honorable President of Bangladesh China Chamber of Commerce and Industries, Honorable President of ERF, and all the friends from media and respected members of BCCCI and ERF. Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu Alaikum, good morning, and Chao Shang Hao. I am Almamun Ridha, Joint Secretary of Bangladesh China Chamber of Commerce and Industry. 
would like to take the opportunity of welcoming you all to today's virtual discussion on Bangladesh China economy and trade relation during and beyond the pandemic. Opportunities and challenges being jointly organized by Bangladesh China Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the Economic Reporters Forum ERA. This is the first chapter of our series of seminars depicting the bilateral relationship between. Hey. Mr. Mahbub Jawan, Bangladesh Ambassador to the People's Republic of China, and Mr. Joshimuddin, President of BCCI. This has been my immense pleasure to welcome you to the virtual discussion on Bangladesh-China economic and trade relation in the aftermath of the COVID-19 global pandemic, which is jointly organized by the Economic Reporters Forum, ERF, and Bangladesh-China Chamber of Commerce and Industry, BCCCI. Our honorable discussions will talk on existing business relations between two friendly nations. They will explore new avenues of opportunities of trade and business in the coming age of fourth industrial revolution. Ladies and gentlemen, over the past 45 years, the relation between China and Bangladesh has been developing with cooperation and friendship on both sides. In the international arena, Bangladesh has, to the best of its capacity, maintained unwavering support for the One China policy and China's peaceful rise. The father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, was associated with China during his political life. He traveled to China in 19. He was impressed by New China. After the independence of Bangladesh, the work of establishing diplomatic relations with China under the leadership of Bangabandhu began after overcoming many adversaries. Distinguished guests, this is a very hard time for all as the world is suffering from this pandemic. Once again, China proves that they are a friend indeed as we found a friend in need who help us with providing COVID fighting equipments and expertise. We are getting closer to strike a deal on the vaccine. Having said that, we are also aware of the difficulties that lie ahead on our way of growing together. I hope today's interaction will shed light on both the area of... Assalamu alaikum. The Honorable Chief Guest, His Excellency Mr. Tipu Monshi, MP Honorable Minister, Ministry of Commerce, ba Government of Bangladesh. Guest of Honours, Mr. Shirajul Islam, Executive Chairman, Bangladesh Investment Development Authority. Mr. Lee Ziming, His Excellency, the Chinese Ambassador to the People's Republic of Bangladesh. His Excellency, Mr. Mahbub Zaman, Bangladesh Ambassador to the People's Republic of China. Mr. Joshimuddin, President, FBCCI. The Honourable President of ERF, the keynote paper presenter, dignitaries, respected journalists, and the honorable members of BCCI and ERF. Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum and good morning. I, Gazigola Murtuza, President of Bangladesh China Chamber of Commerce and Industry, would like to take this opportunity to welcome you today in this virtual discussion titled Bangladesh China Economic and Trade Relations During and Beyond the Pandemic Opportunities and Challenges, jointly organized by BCCI and the Economic Reporters Forum. This is our first deliberation of our series of seminars exploring the existing bilateral relations between Bangladesh and China. The issue, I believe you would all agree, is a timeless step as the world is still recovering from the stagnancy of economic slowdown from last year due to this pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, Bangladesh is a good neighbor and a good friend to China. In recent years, the development of Bangladesh, China had to take drastic measures, new ways of communications, innovative ways of trade and investment, which now has become the new doctrine of necessity to cope against the threats and challenges encountered by adapting in this new normal way of life. COVID-19 has taken away many things from us, but at the same time... Ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to all of you. At the outset, I would like to thank uh, the Bangladesh-China Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the Economic Reporters Forum for inviting me to make this keynote presentation before you. I consider this a privilege and I truly appreciate this particular opportunity. 
I have got some PowerPoint slides and I would like to take you through uh, my slides. So I'm going to share my screen. I hope you can uh, see my screen now. So the point is that the issue that we are discussing today is extremely, extremely important and a timely one. Uh, this is partly because over the past decades, Bangladesh has achieved a number of major uh, milestones in terms of socioeconomic uh, development. And given the fact that the global economies are now grappling with this COVID-19 crisis, it is only timely to think about, like, you know, to make a strengthened partnership with a, such a dynamic country like China and to find out way forward that is going to benefit both the countries and in the process will also help Bangladesh in achieving its various you know, targets that we have uh, set up, including uh, the objective of, you know, being an upper middle income country by 2031 and then a high income country by 2041. So as you know that uh, we're discussing across the world, we have seen the COVID-19 has caused unprecedented health and economic crisis. According to some estimates, the lost output, the value of lost output could be in the range 11 trillion to 28 trillion dollars. Of course, Bangladesh has been relatively a resilient economy. I mean, our growth rate has been in the range of 1% and perhaps in a 6.2% this year. So that would indicate that Bangladesh has been relatively you know, better off compared to many other countries. But having said that, if you would look at this chart here, you will see that we would expect to grow at a rate of 8% in these years, but that growth rate has been slashed to somewhat lower of you know, around 5% and then 6%. So that would imply there would be some, uh, uh, some implications for having a lower output. So as you can see in this particular chart here, like if there were no COVID situation, probably we have taken these scores where we would be maintaining a growth rate of you know, close to 8%. And given that the COVID now has a struck, our growth rate are going to be lower you know, as has been indicated in the budget space as well. Now, if you consider the distance between these two lines, then we can say that because of the lower than expected growth rate, our economy in 2021 could be $31 billion smaller than what it would be uh, without the COVID-19 global pandemic. So I think all nations in the world, you know, they are having you know, this kind of uh, economic crisis. Now, what are the key priorities for Bangladesh? Of course, you know, what is dealing with COVID-19? That would require mass vaccination, uh, boosting up the health sector, and also providing support to the business community, people you know, who got affected, and also the providing additional social security support. So that's the priority number one. Many people would also consider revitalizing the export-led growth process should also be an, another priority because uh, we know that our export sector took a massive hit. And even uh, 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 after this financial year, our total export volume will be less than what we achieved in fiscal year 2019. And a renewed investment uh, activities in the economy will be needed to promote growth and at the same time to achieve prosperity. So these give, uh, given these priorities, one of the issues that I would like to argue and, 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 and some of the speakers have already pointed out, I think the proactive and productive engagements with world's one of the largest economies and of course one of the most dynamic economies like China can help us achieve these objectives. Why? Because China's economy remains you know, pretty robust and trade is recovering fast. I mean, as I speak today, the data are showing that 
uh, the China's exports and imports have risen much faster than the last year. And also China has now become uh, the world's largest recipient of FDI, along with one of the largest source of FDI. China, we know that it, it promotes connectivity, especially you know, the role of you know, BRI projects and activities. Uh, so that is important. We have seen rapid transformational, uh, transformation of the Chinese economy. And that would lead to exporting opportunities for many countries. Uh, this, this is one of the points that I would like to, I'm going to highlight you know, throughout this presentation. China is investing heavily into R&D activities. And you know, uh, not only that, you know, it has successfully now landed a, a rover in uh, on Mars, but at the same time, it has also come up with uh, uh, COVID nineteen vaccines, and and there there, there is room for uh, cooperation as well. And the other important factor is Bangladesh has got preferential market access in China, and we need to take advantage of such preferential access. Now. One thing I must tell you that, you know, whenever there is a discussion on China's uh, economic growth, then what becomes very clear is this. It is important to discuss, you know, how China within a generation transform itself. So just to share with uh, some pictures, you know, these kind of, I think, uh, changes can be best described with the help of some pictures. And that's what I'm going to do. Now, this is the picture, and many of you know, this is basically Shanghai in the 1980s. And then, sorry, um, okay, so th this is Shanghai in the 1980s, and within 30 years, you know, or less than 30 years, you know, it has been transformed completely, as you can see in the picture. Now, we all know about Shenzhen as well. It used to be a fishing village in the 1980s. And from there, it has now become the China Silicon Valley, as you can see here. And if you see the contrast, you know, within just 30 years, it's so remarkable, amazing. And this is truly inspirational for a developing country like Bangladesh. In many cases, you know, it so happens that the provinces, you know, that the cities that are close to the coastal belt, they first develop and the rest of the country will lag behind. So in the case of China, Shanghai and Shenzhen, they grew, they developed, but China was also able to take its development efforts into the inner regions. Think about Chengdu in Sichuan province, and you see the remarkable tra transformation here as well. Chengdu in 1990s, and as you can say, in 2010s, and see the contrast here. So China's this remarkable transformation uh, provides a lot of lessons for many of the developing countries. And since now China has become a very large economy and, and remains a buoyant economy, it can be a major source of growth for other countries. Perhaps you are all aware that in purchasing power parity terms, China is already world's largest economy. And if you see the way it has happened, it is quite miraculous. You know, many economists think this is something that happens once in a lifetime. And as you can see here, what I'm doing here, I'm measuring the gross domestic product, which is GDP, in purchasing power parity terms. Please note that this is in purchasing power parity terms. Huh? And on the vertical axis, I have, I have got say $10 trillion, $20 trillion, $40 trillion, and so on. And these are the leading economies in 1990s. And look carefully what happens now, how fast China was able to transform its economy. So as you can see, until 2000, China is still at much lower than the US. Then by mid 2010s, you know, it exceeded US. It is racing ahead. And there are some projections that by 2050, China will be having one third of the global economy when measured in terms of purchasing power parity. So that's one dimension. But if we are also going to measure GDP in terms of US dollar, then also 
According to some estimates, China is going to be world's largest economy by 2028. We all are aware of China's export success. And similar to the growth performance that I showed you, China also did more or the same thing when it comes to international trade. And here is the figure for exports of goods and services. And you will see there is a mark here, which basically indicates 2001. And that is the year when China joined the World Trade Organization after more than 15 years of negotiations. And these are some of the world's leading nations, including Bangladesh. And we are measuring here exports and goods and services. This is 1 trillion, 2 trillion. And let's see how the global economies have done well over the years. Please keep your eyes on this line here, 2000, when you are going to see some rapid rise of China. As you can see, until, 90, until 2000, perhaps China is growing. But then now see, after 2001, the way China is rising. This was the shock of the 2008 global financial crisis. This was the period 2015-2016 when global trade was really slow. But overall, now China has become the world's largest uh, exporter of goods and services. Now, the point I'm trying to make here is this. China has become a very large export economy. But on the other side of the coin, it has also become one of the top two largest importer of goods and services. So prior to COVID, China exported $2.69 trillion worth of goods and services, and it imported almost $2.5 trillion worth of goods and services. And the growth that I showed you by 2050, China is going to have one third of the global economy measured in purchasing power parity terms. So that means China's imports will increase further. And that's where our opportunities are. And this is one of the points that I would like to highlight you know, uh, throughout the presentation. Now, in the post-COVID world, as we're trying to get back to our normal track of economic growth, we are trying to revitalize our export sector. It is important to understand like, you know, where we stand in terms of bilateral trade relationship with China. But until now, if I can put it in that way, perhaps you know, we have not been able to take advantage of China's growth because the current trade relationship is almost all about China imports from China, as you can see here, like, you know, we are exporting to China something like, you know, less than $1 billion. I, I have used the information here just prior to, you know, COVID-19. We know that 20, uh, fiscal year 20 was a, a difficult year, but we are importing $14 billion worth of goods and services uh, from China. And China's share in Bangladesh's exports is just, you know, 2%. And I think, you know, we can do a lot better, you know, now, there are some estimates that show how much of trade potential or export potential is being currently utilized. And we have the estimates for many different countries. I'm just going to highlight the estimates for China, as you can see. Those estimates su suggest Bangladesh as a country, we have been able to utilize only 30% of our export potential given the current capacity we have. So that means even with our current capacity, we should be able to expand our exports to China at least by another three to four billion dollars. All right. It is also important to know, as I already mentioned it to you, that China has also become a very large importing country. So world's most economies, all economies in the world, they are trying to get a higher share of Chinese market. So how we are doing in that context? Look here, there's a chart. In this chart, as you can see here, the bubbles, the bubbles shows the size of market in China. So here, Peru, it has got 0.7% of China's share, okay, in, in Chinese market, all right? And on this side, we are measuring how fast countries are expanding their exports to China. And here is the thing. For Bangladesh, the current share is only 0.05%. If we are able to increase their share to 1%, a 
additional $25 billion worth of exports would be possible from Bangladesh. So that is the opportunity for us to export more into the Chinese market. Now, in order to make possible, like, you know, we would like to export more to China. And currently there are new opportunities that have also come for Bangladesh to take advantage of. China has recently offered duty-free market access in 97% of our product line. And Bangladesh should be more competitive if we are able to use that duty-free market access. We need to attract Chinese investment projects in our export sector so that our export can expand. And also what is important that there is already a lot of pledge for Chinese investment into Bangladesh. And we need to make sure we need to pursue, you know, so that those investment at the expense. Just to give you an example, on the left chart, as you see here, how much China has pledged that it is going to invest in many different countries. So for Bangladesh, the pledge, the commitment is close to $28 billion worth of investment. But until now, what we have got, we have got only the stock of Chinese FDI in Bangladesh, only of you know, $2 billion. So this is an area where we can work together and, and, and materialize you know, some of the place of Chinese investment into Bangladesh. Now, in the next few slides, what I'm going to do, I'm going to explain this to you. The transformation that I have talked about in China and how that is going to create more trading and exporting opportunities uh, for us. Please bear with me as I'm going to take you uh, these charts. These charts are not complex at all. They look complex, but I'm going to explain this to you. This is what is called the export product space. Okay, Just consider it as the sky during the night time. And all the dots that you see are stars. And these stars are nothing but export products. And they show how one export product is linked to another export product. So like, you know, if a country is somewhere here and can produce this item more efficiently, then for that country, it is so easy to produce many other items. So that's why we have got very thick network of products at the core of this product space. Now, consider the, this colored line. And this colored line is there because they indicate what Bangladesh is currently producing within this export product space. And this is the cluster for ready-made garments and footwear. As you can see, all green dots. So essentially, we are only there when we're producing garments and footwear. We have got a few other items there, like you know, this is one color item, and this one's only a few. But we know this, Bangladesh's export is heavily concentrated in ready-made garments. And that's why uh, this chart is like this. Let me give you an extreme example so that we get a better feeling. So this is on the left, you see Gabon. So I'm now comparing Gabon, which is a central West African country. And what does Gabon do? As you can see, in the export product space, Gabon is only exporting this item, which is very good, which is petroleum goods. And it has got a few red dots, which are plywood and other wood items. And the rest of the uh, product space, export space is basically empty. So compared to Gabon, we are doing much better. Now, pause for five seconds and think about how the Chinese export product space is going to look like. So here's a chart for China. As you can see, extremely diversified. And of course, we know China is uh, world's one of the most success uh, uh, case, uh, case study on, on, the, on the export sector. But it has got presence in the garment cluster where Bangladesh is also exporting. This is the cluster where you have got broadcasting equipment, electronic goods. And this is another cluster where China is making a headway, There's some chemical uh, items and inorganic material. And in the center of the product space, when there are many, many products, China has made some good gains. Okay, so this is the Chinese uh, uh, a product space. Just to give you the idea of Germany and Japan, as you can see again, they're pretty successful exporters, we know, and they have got clusters almost everywhere. But look carefully though, 
in the garment sector and footwear germany does not have any export presence so is the case in the case of japan in the case of garment and footwear japan either does not have any strong presence you know we know that historically as countries grow and develop they would move away from some of the traditional sectors like you know labor intensive sector they will start moving into the product space where more technology intensive goods can be produced so that is the example of uh, germany and and japan let's compare with china united states again as you can see the united states is extremely diversified it is doing so well in this corner here which is chemical inorganic uh, materials and inside the core of product space the united states has got very strong presence china is soon catching up but the point that i would like to draw your attention to you see and this is what we are going to see in the next phase you see this china's presence here they are going to soon leave this space you know so in the case of ready made garments footwear you will see a lot of export earning opportunities are going to arise and if i may tell this to you actually you know that process has already begun just to substantiate that argument so here is the chart of like you know what countries have got share in the european market of textiles and clothing item and as you can see here china share in the european union ready made garment imports has fallen as you can see here from more than 30% to around 22% and that falling share has been captured by bangladesh as you can see here bangladesh's exports has rise now consider the case of america the united states where we can again we are seeing the same kind of trend chinese share has fallen quite rapidly but in the us market that share has not been gained by bangladesh so in the us market the loss of china share has benefited uh, vietnam now one thing i would also like to highlight the fact that even within china within china china's domestic market the import of ready made garments will grow fast and bangladesh should be able to take advantage of the situation now here is the market of chinese or uh, garment or apparel markets that is chinese domestic market and in this market as you can see bangladesh currently has a share of 7.6% but you see the vietnam has already captured a much higher share of 19.1% and even cambodia is growing fast you know these countries are on the right of bangladesh so they are growing fast their exports are growing fast into chinese market and we need to catch up and these duty free quota free market access that i just pointed out should be able to help finally i would like to mention about the product space of vietnam and and and, and bangladesh you know because we often compare ourselves with vietnam as you can see the vietnam has got strong presence in textiles and clothing and footwear so does bangladesh but then vietnam has recently moved into this element the broadcasting equipment electronic components and integrated circuits that has become vietnam's major exports and there are also many other items you know that vietnam has diversified uh, uh. now what is the policy lesson for bangladesh bangladesh need to get into this product is okay now for that to happen the best way of making this happen is to make use of foreign direct investment and there i see the country like china that can be so influential in providing the technology investment and also maybe through relocation of farms uh, that process can 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 help a lot and this is why we need to cooperate uh, closely and that can really benefit us so in terms of way forward based on the presentation uh, that i have shared with you i would like to share with you a few points number 1 let's explore the best practices in tackling covid-19 crisis and china is a success a case story and including the option for production of vaccines you know this is something this is the area where we can build capacity as well my second point will be if we can target a 1% market share in china by 2030 and that will help us create a, an additional 25 billion dollar water goods and services and that would also imply lots of employment opportunities being created in bangladesh 
I would strongly suggest that let's proactively pursue Chinese investment, especially those placed investment that have not been materialized yet. And if we can get some of those investment into our export sector, then the export response should be a strong one. We should also try to facilitate the relocation of farms from China into our export-oriented sector that I have already pointed out. I would also like to emphasize on the fact that we need to negotiate with China to retain duty-free market access uh, in China for an extended period beyond LEC graduation because Chinese market is really big. It is going to be an important market in the future and it will be extremely important for Bangladesh to maintain the duty-free uh, market access. As you know, after LEC graduation, what is going to happen is that we're going to lose this duty-free market access. And if that is going to happen, then 78% of Bangladesh exports to China will be subject to you know, some kind of uh, duties. And this can have some adverse consequences for Bangladesh exports. I would like to suggest that even if a unilateral duty-free market access is not going to be possible, then we should prioritize and free trade agreement deal with China. And if we're going to have a FTA deal, then essentially that should also be complemented by an investment agreement with the objective of expanding our exports. Cooperation in the area of technological advancement, I think is extremely important. That is needed for us for fast catching up with others. And let me share with you this. China has recently become, uh, is going to be kind of a global uh, giant in, in technological innovation, and it is investing a lot. Traditional area of Chinese focus was electronics, machinery, automobiles, as, as you know, and high-speed railways as well. But China has recently made a technological breakthrough in renewable energy, adverse telecommunication technologies. They are a major player in artificial intelligence, robotics, space technology. We all know this. And China is, has increased spending on R&D. So I believe cooperation and collaboration with China on the technological front is going to be extremely important for Bangladesh to achieve structural transformation of our economy. And I would think China should consider setting up a technology hub in Bangladesh. And that can generate win-win situation for both the countries. Why? Because if China is going to produce everything, we're seeing a lot of geoeconomic tension, geopolitical tensions. They need to diversify their export base, technological base, you know, into different countries as well. And thereby, China can also expand its supply chain network. And in that context, I believe Bangladesh should be a key candidate to, uh, to have that you know, technology hub uh, in the, in the in, 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 in Asian region. I would also like to suggest that we need to make the most out of BRI initiatives. I know there have been a lot of arguments about the BRI projects, but if we can ensure good governance and transparency in project selection, effective implementation and prudent macroeconomic management, then perhaps the so-called debt traps out of foreign lending and investment, we should be able to you know, avoid that. Finally, my two points are China's rise as global power. I know we know that you know it is, it is going to trigger some heightened geopolitical rivalry we have seen in recent times. So Bangladesh, what Bangladesh needs to do in making use of the opportunities that are available and coming from China, we should also deploy our judicious foreign policy options so that we can avoid being a victim of geopolitical rivalries because of our strengthened trade and economic cooperation with China. So with those few food for thought, I would like to conclude here. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Thank you. Rajak Bhai. Hello. Rajak Bhai, Shun Chan? Yeah. Rajak Bhai, we have many TV channels covering here. Thank you. Our guest of honors, chief guest and excellencies, I have been requested to provide a summary in Bangla because this is being covered by some of the media partners. 
আমরা বলতে চেয়েছি যে বাংলাদেশের এখন যে প্রেক্ষাপট আমাদের অনেক অর্থনৈতিক অগ্রযাত্রার যে আমাদের সাফল্য আছে সেটাকে ত্বরান্বিত করতে হলে এবং এখন যে আমাদের যে কোভিড নাইনটিন এর যে সমস্যা সারা বিশ্বে যাচ্ছে সেখান থেকে উত্তরণের একটা ভালো উপায় হতে পারে যদি আমরা চায়নার সঙ্গে ঘনিষ্ঠভাবে আমাদের ব্যবসা বাণিজ্য সম্পর্কে জোরদার করতে পারি এবং বিশেষত চায়না থেকে বিদেশি বিনিয়োগ এনে আমাদের এক্সপোর্ট সেক্টরকে আমরা চাঙ্গা করতে পারি এক্ষেত্রে কয়েকটি সুপারিশ মালার কথা বলা হয়েছে প্রথমত চায়না আমাদেরকে এখন এক্সটেন্ডেড শুল্ক মুক্ত বাণিজ্য সুবিধা দিয়েছে আমাদের উচিত হবে এই শুল্ক মুক্ত বাণিজ্য সুবিধার সদ্ব্যবহার করা এবং তার মাধ্যমে রপ্তানি বাড়ানো চায়না খুব দ্রুত গতিতে নতুন টেকনোলজি ইন্টেন্সিভ সেক্টরে যাচ্ছে সেখান থেকে তারা এক্সপোর্ট করবে আর্টিফিশিয়াল ইন্টেলিজেন্স রোবোটিক্স ক্যাপিটাল মেশিনারি বাট এর মানে হচ্ছে এই কিছু জায়গায় যেখানে রিলেটিভলি লো টেকনোলজি ইন্টেন্সিভ প্রোডাক্টস আছে সেখানে কিন্তু অন্য দেশের ভালো করার সুযোগ আছে কাজে একটা আমাদের জন্য অপশন হতে পারে চায়নার সঙ্গে কোলাবরেট করে ওই সেক্টরে কিছু ফার্ম চাইনিজ ইনভেস্টমেন্ট রিলোকেট করে বাংলাদেশে আমরা সেগুলো উৎপাদন বাড়াতে পারি এবং সেখান থেকে আমরা বেনিফিট হব আরো কয়েকটি রেকমেন্ডেশন বা সুপারিশের কথা এখানে বলা হয়েছে সেটা হচ্ছে আমাদের এলডিসি গ্রাজুয়েশন হবে এখন দু সালে এলডিসি গ্রাজুয়েশন হওয়া মানে চায়না যে আমাদেরকে এক্সটেন্ডেড ডিউটি ফ্রি মার্কেট অ্যাক্সেস দিয়েছে সাতানব্বই শতকরা সাতানব্বই ভাগ ট্যারিফ লাইনে শুল্ক লাইনে আমরা যে শুল্ক সুবিধা পাচ্ছি শুল্ক মুক্ত সুবিধা পাচ্ছি একটা সুপারিশ বলা হচ্ছে চায়নার সঙ্গে নেগোসিয়েট করা দর কষাকষি করা দেন দরবার করা যেন এলডিসি গ্রাজুয়েশনের পরেও আমরা এই শুল্ক মুক্ত বাণিজ্য সুবিধা ধরে রাখতে পারি এখানে এর জন্য কয়েকটা স্টেপ থাকতে পারে একটা অপশন হচ্ছে যে হয়তো আমরা চায়নার সঙ্গে মুক্ত বাণিজ্য একটা চুক্তি করতে পারি ফ্রি ট্রেড এগ্রিমেন্ট এবং যার আওতায় চায়না আমাদেরকে একটা এক্সটেন্ডেড পিরিয়ড অফ বাণিজ্য সুবিধা দিতে পারে চায়নার মার্কেটে বাণিজ্য সুবিধা ধরে রাখা অত্যন্ত গুরুত্বপূর্ণ কারণ চায়না এখন দুনিয়া ওয়ান অফ দ্য লার্জেস্ট এক্সপোর্টারই নয় চায়না কিন্তু বৈশ্বিক বিশ্ব থেকে তারা কিন্তু অনেক বেশি আমদানি করে থাকে এবং বর্তমানে সে আমদানির পরিমাণ হচ্ছে দুই দশমিক পাঁচ ট্রিলিয়ন ডলার দুই হাজার পাঁচশো বিলিয়ন ডলার কাজে সেখানে বাংলাদেশে ভালো করার অনেক সুযোগ আছে আমি এটাও বলার চেষ্টা করেছি যে চায়না খুব দ্রুতই এক রেডিমেড গার্মেন্টস এর একটা বড় বাজার হতে যাচ্ছে কাজে আমাদের উচিত হবে চায়নার মার্কেটেও আমরা যেন রেডিমেড গার্মেন্টস ভালো করতে পারি তৈরি পোশাক খাত থেকে আমরা হয়তো আরো বেশি মাত্রায় বৈদেশিক মুদ্রা অর্জন করতে পারবো যদি আমরা সেই সুযোগ সুবিধাগুলো কাজে লাগাতে পারি মোটা থেকে আরেকটি জিনিস বলার চেষ্টা করেছি যে চায়না টেকনোলজিতে তারা অনেক বিনিয়োগ করেছে এবং চায়না আস্তে আস্তে তারা অত্যন্ত যেগুলো আমরা বলি যে বর্তমান জামানা প্রযুক্তি আর্টিফিশিয়াল ইন্টেলিজেন্স রোবোটিক্স এইসব মধ্যে তারা সাফল্য দেখাচ্ছে কাজে একটা উপায় হতে পারে আমরা যদি কোঅপারেশন এবং কোলাপারেশনের মাধ্যমে এই টেকনোলজিক্যাল ডেভেলপমেন্ট প্রসেসটাকে ত্বরান্বিত করতে পারি তাহলে আমাদের দেশের যে কাঠামোগত পরিবর্তন সেটাকে করা আমাদের জন্য কিন্তু অনেক সোজা হবে আমরা খুব দ্রুত গতিতে অন্যান্য উন্নত দেশ বা উন্নয়নশীল বিশ্বের সঙ্গে কিন্তু আমরা ক্যাচ আপ করতে পারবো এটা বলেছি এই প্রেক্ষিতে আমি এটাও বলার চেষ্টা করেছি যে চায়না সঙ্গে কাজ করে বাংলাদেশে একটা টেকনোলজিক্যাল হাব তৈরি করা যায় কিনা যার মাধ্যমে মোর আমরা মডার্ন টেকনোলজি ব্যবহার করে এক্সপোর্ট মার্কেটে আমরা যেন সুবিধা পেতে পারি আর একটা জিনিস আমি বলেছি যে চায়না প্রতিশ্রুত যে বিনিয়োগের অঙ্গীকার বাংলাদেশে আছে সেটা প্রায় সাতাশ বিলিয়ন ডলারের কাছাকাছি এ পর্যন্ত বাংলাদেশে চাইনিজ ইনভেস্টমেন্টের স্টক হচ্ছে মাত্র দুই বিলিয়নের সামান্য বেশি কাজে আমাদের উচিত হবে যে আমরা প্রোয়াক্টিভ পদক্ষেপ নেওয়ার মাধ্যমে এই অন্যান্য যে প্রতিশ্রুত বিনিয়োগ সেগুলো বাংলাদেশে এনে কাজে লাগাতে পারি আশা করি রাশেদ আমি বাংলাদেশ প্রেসিডেন্ট অফ বাংলাদেশ চেম্বার অফ কমার্স অ্যান্ড ইন্ডাস্ট্রিজ and president of economic reporters forum uh, it is indeed an honor and privilege to be able to say a few words on the occasion of the virtual discussions on uh, bangladesh china economy and trade relations and uh, and uh, this is being organized by the bangladesh uh, you know china 
uh, uh, a chamber of commerce and industries and also by the economic uh, reporters uh, forum. Uh, so I will just begin by saying on the political aspect of our relations as the ambassador of Bangladesh, that uh, this is a very indeed an historic time and an opportunity. Uh, currently at the political level, our ties uh, are excellent. Uh, uh, last year, we have completed uh, the 45th anniversary of our diplomatic relation between Bangladesh and China. And this year, 2021, uh, 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 it is being celebrated as the 100th uh, centenary celebrations of the father of the nation, Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. And of course, uh, in China itself, this is being celebrated as the 100th uh, uh, foundation of the Communist Party of China and also the launching of the very important 14th, uh, you know, five-year uh, plan. So uh, the message of the Honorable Prime Minister uh, uh, on the occasion of this, uh, our 100 uh, 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 years birth centenary and also the 46 years of our diplomatic relations encapsulates the spirit of cooperation and understanding uh, uh, between uh, uh, Bangladesh and China. And uh, she has already uh, referred to the excellent bilateral relations and stated that China is one of the most valued partners for Bangladesh socio-economic uh, uh, development. And uh, someone uh, in my previous speakers had already said uh, that we have a long history of interaction between uh, our two peoples, uh, two ancient civilization, which facilitated the flow of knowledge, uh, culture, and trade. Uh, and uh, we know that father of the nation, uh, Bangabundu Sheikh Mojibur Rahman, uh, uh, visited China in 1952 and in 1957 and has recollected his uh, memories and experience through the book, uh, uh, you know, uh, Amar Dakha Noachi, The New China as I have seen it. And uh, through these books, uh, the father of the nation has highly appreciated the pa passion, commitment and uh, nation building efforts of the uh, Chinese people. And, uh, and uh, uh, you know, today's, uh, if, if we see the focus, uh, and I've also uh, uh, heard about the excellent presentation of uh, Dr. Moazem, uh, who is uh, Dr. Abdul Razak, uh, who is the research director of Policy Research Institute. It is an excellent piece, um, uh, you know, very an analytical. Uh, it, it highlights the intention of our two countries to further forge uh, greater economic uh, cooperation on the priority sectors and areas of uh, our, uh, you know, uh, mutual interest. And you, you have uh, seen that uh, uh, we have an excellent platform and 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 a dais and uh, a cooperation uh, uh, for uh, further consolidating our relations because because uh, our political relations have been further consolidated in 2014, 2016, and 2019. We had uh, successive uh, uh, three very high level visits and and. Um, uh, already, uh, our previous uh, uh, yeah, speakers have said that we uh, we decided to elevate our partnership to one of uh, strategic partnership of uh, uh, cooperation. Now, I would like to invite Mr. Shirazul Islam, Executive Chairman of Bangladesh Investment Development Authority, BIDA. Executive Chairman, Shrazul Islam, sir, please. Can you in recent years, China's assistance to Bangladesh in all these areas has heightened significantly. Where the Chinese investment in Bangladesh says in infrastructure, power, energy, and telecommunications are noteworthy. The major projects that are being processed with Chinese Financial assistance are the Padna Bridge Rail Link worth US dollar three point three billion, uh, the power plant in Pyra worth USD one point nine billion, establishing digital connectivity worth USD one billion dollar, power grid network strengthening project worth USD one point three two billion dollars. Given these developments, President Z, she. Jinping's announcement of the Belt and Road Initiative in 2013 has paved a roadmap for China-Bangladesh relation, where Bangladesh stands as a crucial partner in the Silk Road economic belt and the 21st century maritime Silk Road. 
Bangladesh's mast is one of the most important maritime hubs, as well as a hub of overland connectivity between the Indian Ocean and the land rock provinces of China, especially Yunnan, which has turned this bilateral relationship into a larger win-win contest. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a significant portion of our imports comes from China. Machinery, cotton, electrical equipment, man-made staple fibers, and knitted or woven fabrics are among the main imports. In addition to iron and steel, Bangladesh imports plastic, fertilizers, organic chemicals, paper, and paperboard, ships, boards, and floating structures. Moreover, over the years, bilateral trade between China and Bangladesh has been very favorable to China, as it is already mentioned in the keynote uh, speech also. Bangladesh has been suffering from a long-term trade deficit since the beginning of bilateral. Like, so you can hear, you, you can see me now? Okay. I'm particularly interested in his um, idea that uh, probably it's now the right time for us to really consider a FTA deal combined with a investment deal between China and Bangladesh. And uh, I also uh, couldn't uh, agree more to his suggesting that uh, there is a uh, huge potential for Bangladesh to export to China. And he even mentioned some very, very practical ways and uh, pragmatical uh, measures to facilitate it. I think it is very, very inspiring and very, very uh, useful. I hope that uh, probably Dr. Uh, Abdul Razak can share your slides to me and uh, so that I can have some further study on it. Very interesting to me. And also today we have the Honorable First Minister of the mental for a FTA and for a investment uh, agreement, I think they are the decision makers. So I, that is why I mentioned that this is a very, very important meeting. And in recent years, uh, we've uh, witnessed uh, intensive ex economic and co economic cooperation and friendly mutual assistance between our two countries. Uh, here, I would like to mention that China should never forget that at the beginning of the pandemic, when China was in the most challenging time last year, Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, on behalf of the people and the government of Bangladesh, showed your strong solidarity by providing a large quantity of badly needed medical supplies to China. And in return, after getting back from the worst situation, China also expressed its gratitude to Bangladesh by providing even more medical supplies to our friends in Bangladesh to the best of China's ability, and including sending a medical expert team to Bangladesh, which I believe is the only one uh, during this pandemic uh, approved by the Bangladesh government which is uh, uh, very, uh, it's an it's example of our mutual help with each other. Coronavirus indeed caused challenges to the trade and economic cooperation between our two countries. For example, according to the statistics from uh, China Customs, the total trade volume between China and Bangladesh in 2020 was $15.9 trillion, which is a 13.6 drop from the year 2019. These considerable uh, trade, uh, I think uh, a considerable number of Chinese and Bangladesh trade enterprises 
must suffer in the shadow of these falling figures. However, challenges are always accompanied by opportunities. Despite the severe situation of pandemic, it is, delightful, it is delightful for me to discover the resilience of both China and Bangladesh in economic development. I've noticed that uh, His Excellency Mr. Mustafa Kamar, the finance minister of Bangladesh, recently uh, claimed that uh, uh, in the recent parliament meeting, he claimed that uh, Bangladesh were top other South Asian countries in terms of GDP growth, with securing 6.1% growth rate in the current uh, fiscal year of 2020 to 2021, which is very encouraging. And China is also uh, doing good in the meantime. And in the first quarter of this year, China's GDP increased 18.3% year on year, which is quite a magnificent uh, figure. And China got off a good start with both imports and exports, surging by, uh, surging by 38.7% and 19% uh, respectively, import and export. The consumer market recovered at a fast pace and uh, contact, uh, contact consumption such as catering improved markedly. China's retail sales grew 30.4% and online retail sales of physical goods grew 25.8% year on year. The employment situation may, remained stable on the whole, and the employment tasks and the targets were met fairly well. Under the guidance of dual circulation paradigm of China and the innovative driving strategy, new drivers of investment have been gaining strength. Investment in high-tech industries, manufacturing, and services grew respectively by 37.3%, 41.6%, and 28.6% year-on-year, respectively. All those figures you can see that are very, very uh, impressive. With the implementation of uh, 97% zero tariff treatment from July last year, new opportunities for bilateral trade with development are gaining its momentum and trade relations between us recovering rapidly according to the statistics from China Customs. With the implementation, uh, with, with the trade volume between China and Bangladesh from January to uh, April of this year is 7.19 percent, a 7.19 billion US dollars, with 42 percent, 43 percent actually, a uh, year-on-year increase. And China's export to Bangladesh was 6.84 billion US dollars, and with a 43.8 percent year-on-year increase. And China's import from Bangladesh was uh, 350 million US dollars with a 28.1% increase. Well, it, from these figures, you, we can see that there is still a great trade imbalance between China and Bangladesh. That is why we're very happy to see more uh, exports from Bangladesh to China in the future, with the measures probably as, as suggested by uh, Dr. Abdul Raskar. Moreover, we have more accomplishments in the aspect of G2G project cooperation. For example, the Kanapuri Tunnel project 
constructed by China Communications Construction Company, has achieved a breakthrough with the completion of the left line in August of 2020. And Bangabandhu Bangladesh-China Friendship Exhibition Center has been successfully completed and handed over to the Minister of Commerce. Besides, the accumulated infrastructure construction contract volume between our two countries reached a very encouraging figure, 72.6 billion US dollars by the end of 2020. It is worth mentioning, we have been witnessing more and more cooperation in the fields of anti-coronavirus vaccines. Though Chinese vaccines are facing huge domestic demands and a tight supply of international market, China tried its best to extend a helping hands to Bangladesh and the 500,000 Sinovac vaccines gift from the Chinese government arrived in Dhaka on May 12th of 2020 as the special aid will feeder gift for the Bangladesh people. And another 600,000 Sinovac, Sinopharm vaccines gifts are on the way and hopefully it will be completed uh, by, uh, I think on the 13th of this month, which is only a couple of days back later, which is a joint, uh, uh, I mean, achievement uh, uh, by the embassy of uh, China to Bangladesh and also the Bangladesh uh, embassy to China and the, uh, the Excellency, the Honorable Ambassador Zaman also made a lot of uh, very, very valuable efforts to make all this happen. And next, we will be witnessing commercial pro procurement of Chinese vaccines and pragmatic discussions are undertaken between Chinese and Bangladesh enterprises. A joint production of uh, these uh, uh, coronavirus vaccines as well. And uh, they've made some very encouraging uh, progress as far as I know uh, for joint production of vaccines. All these are vivid atoms of the cooperation and joint efforts of our two countries in fighting against the pandemic and standing together to face the challenges. I'm fully confident in recent future under the Belt and Road Initiative. Besides of the economic and trade cooperation, we would have profound cooperations in some new fields of different areas such as industrial zones, or innovation uh, parks, 5G constructions, 5G communications, uh, base stations constructions, high-speed railway constructions, probably linking Dhaka with Chittagong, and so on. Uh, in both G2G or public-private partnership uh, framework in the post-pandemic era. And institutions like FPCCI and the BCCCI can surely play very, very important roles in facilitating the implementation of this kind of uh, cooperation. This year is of great importance, great significance for our two countries. Bangladesh successfully celebrated the birth centenary of Father of the Nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Rahman, and the golden jubilee of the independence. And China, as just uh, correctly mentioned by the, uh, Ambassador Zaman, China will assure the centenary of the Communist Party of China, or CPC, on July 1st, 2021. As an outstanding leader, Bang, uh, Bang Bandhu Sheikh Mujib Rahman envisioned the Shuna Bangla, lightening the development direction of Bangladesh, governizing 
the 160 million Bangladeshi people in the pursuit of national prosperity. This illustrates quite well that a strong guidance is vital for a country's development. In China, the Communist Party of China, CPC, offered such strong guidance in the development of China's development and its funding a century ago. Over the last century, the CPC has stayed true to its original, inspire, original aspiration and mission of pursuing the well-being of the Chinese people and the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. Under the leadership of CPC, China has accomplished historic achievements and widely praised by the world. Under the leadership of CPC, China has successfully contained the coronavirus and the war, the battle against the COVID-19 decisively. Under the leadership of CPC, China has also helped many countries in the world in fighting against the pandemic and taking practical actions to build a community of health for mankind. Our similar suffering in history uh, made the Chinese people fully understand the aspirations of Bangladesh people and are sincerely willing to assist and to cooperate to be of some help with our Bangladesh friends to build a Shusuna Bangla. This meaningful year provide a good connection and opportunity for China-Bangladesh future cooperation. So last, I would like to thank BCCCI and again for inviting me and I would be glad to learn more from other distinguished guests, including the Honorable Commercial Minister. And I hope that there will be more communication opportunities like this with you in the future. Thank you, Shuna Bangla and Shuna Bangbandu. Thank you, sir, for your encouraging and important address. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, I'd like to cordially invite today's chief guest, uh, Honorable Commerce Minister, Mr. Tipu Munshi MP. Manani Munshi Mohdai. Yes, sir. I shall have to go for some other meeting, so really I'm sorry. Uh, Executive Chairman Bida, His Excellency the Ambassador of China to Bangladesh, His Excellency the Ambassador of Bangladesh to China, President BCCI, Bangladesh China Chamber of Commerce and Industries, President Economic Reporters Forum, friends from the media, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon, and salam alaikum. It's really honor and privilege to present here a chief guest in this event named Bangladesh-China Economic and Trade Relations in the aftermath of COVID-19 global pandemic. Jointly organized with Bangladesh, China, Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Reporters Forum. This is a very timely initiative to engage ourselves from find, for finding ways to recover from the adverse economic effects caused by the COVID pandemic. Today, uh, uh, Mr. Rachak, the way he, the key, keynote speaker, he explained a lot and details. So that is really, uh, Good thing for us to understand and know the scenario. And beside that, our uh, BIDA chairman and honorable excellencies, I mean, 
the ambassador of China and Bangladesh both has, has discussed the matter in brief. So it's really good to know all these things today. You, we all, you know, you are aware that Bangladesh gives utmost priority to its relations with neighboring and regional friendly countries, and that includes China, with whom we have a long and enduring relationship of fraternity and one. Since the establishment of diplomatic relations, Bangladesh and China have developed robust bilateral cooperation based on mutual trust and interests. The most in inspiring feature of Sino-Bangladesh relationship is its relative stability and continuity. We therefore have high importance on our relationship with China. We have a long enduring trade relation with China. We are a member of Asia-Pacific Trade Agreement, Group of 77, Food and Agriculture Organization, and WTO. We are supporting each other in all mutual multilateral trade form, form, forums in promoting bilateral relations. Honorable guests, we have high level engagement in trade, investment, political and economic arena since our independence. The visit of the visit of Honorable President of China, His Excellency Xi Jinping, to Bangladesh in October 2016, and the visit of Honorable Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Her Excellency Sheikh Hasina, to China in July 2019, are many festation of the engagement of this engagement. The, during these visits, a notable number of issues of mutual interest, including trade, economy, and investment cooperation were agreed during those visits. China also announced huge investment in various sectors of Bangladesh. The implementation of those investment projects are now in full swing. Among the ongoing projects are the Padma multi-purpose bridge project, you know, Kornofuli Tunnel, Dhaka Chitavang Highway, four lane upgradation, <coughs> sorry, Paira Port Development, Chitavang Cox Bazar Railway Project, Power Grid Network Strengthening Project, Dhaka Ashwali Elevated Expressway, Dhaka Silhet, four lane highway, EDC. You all know that's all are very mega projects and very significant projects for us, Bangladesh. Distinguished guests, during the visit among other instruments, an MOU was signed between the Ministry of Commerce of China and Ministry of Commerce of Bangladesh on launching a joint feasibility study of China-Bangladesh Free Trade Agreement on 14 October 2016. Free Trade Agreements, FTAs, help to enhance competitive advantage increase markets, assesses for goods and services, strengthen investors' confidence, and to a large extent, Bangladesh build Bangladesh economic sustainability. Signing the MOU marks the journey of signing a bilateral FTA with China Although some pro progress have been made, but still we need to put lots of efforts to conclude the negotiation and materialize the prospect of the FTA. I think our Honorable Ambassador of China also mentioned this uh, agreement things. I believe this will also help Bangladesh to face the LDC graduation challenges. Distinguished guests, China is the largest trading partner of Bangladesh. Last year, the total trade between Bangladesh and China was 12 billion almost, of which Bangladesh import from China was 11.5 billion, and Bangladesh export to China was about 6.6 .6 billion. The trade balance is highly in favor of China. Let me take this opportunity to thank the Chinese government for offering Bangladesh exports to China duty-free, quota-free access for 97% of Chinese tariff lines from 1st July 2020. As a result, 
8,256 products originating from Bangladesh will enjoy duty-free quota free access to China. I strongly believe that the utilization of this DFQF facility, the trade imbalance can be reduced to a greater extent. We can utilize this advantage also <clears throat> if we really try hard for this. This 8,256 products, the huge range of products we can take the chance also. Ladies and gentlemen, trade is our life's line and central to our vision to move into the ranks of an advanced developing nation. Bangladesh has been a major beneficiary of, a, of an open market economy and globalization. Naturally, the government will continue to practice of an open economy to encourage and facilitate, facilitate business. Ladies and gentlemen, the government is pleased to create the enviable environment and the Ministry of Commerce continuous, continues to with supportive trade facility and business friendly policies overall. At the same time, the Ministry Ministry of Commerce will continue to support the and encourage the private sector to take lead and spearhead the industrial development of the country. Finally, I'd like to take this opportunity to express my heartfelt thanks to President BCCI and ERF to invite me as chief guest in this event. I also extend my thanks to Executive Chairman who is really doing very good, and very proactive gentleman, Bida, and the Chinese ambassador in Bangladesh, His Excellency Mr. Ji Min, and the Bangladesh ambassador of China, His Excellency Mr. Mahmoud Jaman, to present here and putting their valuable comments. Actually, they are through, they are quite uh, elaborately, they have explained, they have, their speech is really encouraging and very knowledgeable also. My warmest congratulations to Mr. Jashimuddin. He was supposed to come. I don't know. He could not come. But also thanks to him. He's a new president of MPCCI. Uh, I wish all good health success of this gathering. And again, I want to give thanks to ERF. They, they, they have organized this wonderful meeting today. Thanks. Joy Bangla. Joy Bangla. Thank you, Honorable Minister for your excellent remarks. Uh, now I would like to invite Brigadier General Shah Mohammad Sultan Uddin Iqbal, Senior Vice President, BCCCI, to offer a vote of thanks. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you all. Assalamu alaikum. Honorable Chief Guest, Honorable Minister, Minister of Commerce, Bangladesh Government, Mangchiala Trangfu, Shangupu Putrang, His Excellency, Mr. Tipu Munshi, Member of Parliament. Special cooperation in the desk to come. Thank you all indeed. Muttuza bhai, amre kana shesh kote bhai. Muttuza bhai. Thank you everybody for participating. I hope everybody enjoyed the session and thank you again, our special guest. Thank you. Thank you.